Most of the survivors from its early days frequent other neighborhood taverns like McGovern's and the Emerald Pub. The very basis of the neighborhood has changed in the recent years as piers became inactive and were torn down. Glorious, glorious. The West Side Highway with its giant Canal Street bridge also came down opening up the waterfront. This has begun a new era for the neighborhood. People are now attracted to visit here, stroll along the riverside and stop by the ear for a brew. Gonna get drunk tonight like I never got drunk before. Oh, when I'm drunk, I'm happy as can be. Then the new patrons are an eclectic crowd comprised of businessmen and students, artists and musicians, actors and attorneys. Some have a notion of the bar's history. Says B.C. Vermeersh, a former manager, Every day in the bar I would overhear people discussing the origin of the ear, where it came from, where it got its name and who owns it. I would never interfere even though most of the time what they said was erroneous. I believe the urban folklore and mythology surrounding the business is probably to its advantage. The ear is in a neighborhood that is too far south to be part of Greenwich Village, too far north to be called Tribeca, and too far west to be included in Soho. The few residents of the area jokingly refer to it as Limbo or Woho. Those few residents aren't likely to get any new neighbors, at least not legal ones. Since 1961, the area has been known as the Graphic Arts Center, a designation that protects its buildings from being renovated into living lofts. Because of its unusual, out-of-the-way location and its affinity for promoting new artists, the ear has developed a unique character. Says BC, the ear inn has a lot of mystique and people want to identify with it. The mystique in the origin of the ear has created a politique, and that politique is that everyone should be able to identify with some aspect of the ear. In 1984, the proprietorship of the business was assumed by Gerard Walker and Martin Sheridan, who have maintained the ambience and added much merry spirit to the ear. The original tobacco shop has disappeared, as have all traces of James Brown, except those that survive in folk tales. And except for its namesake, the godfather of soul who can be found today in the jukebox. The sailor's slop stew once served has been replaced with international home cooking, and patrons can choose among ten brands of beer instead of the one that was brewed here each day. The old sailors and longshoremen are rarely seen here anymore. Their bar stools are now occupied by a new clientele. But the little house that has witnessed nearly 200 years of change in the neighborhood remains, carrying on a tradition and recalling an era of New York streetscapes that has long since passed. from around the world would come get lost in the New York City swirl. They even move around in holes in the ground. There is an old house in New Amsterdam town in that part that they now call down. It's a simple little shack and a bit run down. Uh, built by a black man named James Brown. Little do we know who he really was. He just settled over on the west coast and kind of disappeared. The ships sailed in and let the sailors out. They came by the house for their grub and stout. For many, many years the bar would boast. This place is known from coast to coast. 
They called it the Green Door. Kind of a club. No women allowed, no siree. There's an eerie, eerie lake and an eerie canal. An errand go bra and life's merry go round. And when you're thirsty for an old time beer, there's a new brew for you at the inn of ear. Now all you drunkards in the back join in on the chorus just like you did in the good old days. There's an eerie, eerie lake and an eerie canal. An iron go bra and life's merry go round. And when you're thirsty for an old time beer, there's a new brew for you at the Inn of Today marks the beginning of Black History Month, a celebration of the contributions African Americans have made to our society. Well, a small piece of black history here in New York could soon be a thing of the past, literally. Owners are afraid some nearby construction could cause the James Brown House in Soho to crumble. As Barry Cunningham reports, it's a race against time to keep this site standing. The James Brown House is a living, breathing relic of the Revolutionary War. Home of the Ear Inn, an artist's hangout in West Soho, the house was built in 1817 by James Brown, an African-American tobacco merchant. Historians believe Brown was an aide to George Washington and was with Washington when he crossed the Delaware. Now you get a fair idea of what, what the problem we have here. 181 years old, the landmark house is a building collapse waiting to happen. Transportation engineers fear that vibrations from a west side water main excavation may collapse the building's crumbling walls. The owner says if the house falls down, a huge chunk of black history in New York will be forgotten. Well, this is said to be the only other African-American revolutionary colonial era heritage site other than the African burial ground uh, that exists in lower Manhattan. The post and beam construction in the old tavern was banned in 1835, as was the activity in the upstairs rooms when it was a longshoreman's dive called the Green Door. Chaps would come off the boats into the bar, Upstairs was known for ladies, so downstairs your few beers, upstairs your little bit of pleasure. The James Brown House is so shaky right now that it's being propped up by two brick buildings on either side. The Department of Transportation is trying to save this piece of New York history by installing earthquake sensors in the old timbers. We have uh, electronic vibration monitors which ensure that the digging across the street doesn't reach, uh, doesn't cause a level of vibration that will pose a danger to the building. And what if it does? If it does, the job will be shut down immediately. It's a rare survivor in a tough town. And fortunately, we have brick neighbors to lean on. But we do need help, all the help we can get, to make sure that this house survives as is. The owners say they can't get insurance because the old building was condemned as a fire trap all the way back in 1905. And if they can't get help soon in shoring up the building, the James Brown house may soon be history. In Soho, Barry Cunningham for the WB11 News at 10.